Greetings, friends. Good morning, and welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. Website is scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives. That's where you go to support this mission of truth. Today, uh, we are starting our week with some wisdom and some encouragement from the Psalms and from the Proverbs. We are ready for Psalm 39 and Proverbs 26. Now, Psalm 39 is actually only 13 verses long. Uh, So the podcast this morning has the potential to be pretty short. But there's some pretty big chunks of meat in this uh, this psalm uh, that I think we need to really open up our hearts and kind of take it in and allow this passage, this uh, chapter, this psalm to be a mirror. Uh, that maybe we need to take a minute and look into and see if any of this uh, pierces kind of the way we act, the way we think, the way we are with our mouth. One of the big things that we, like large topics that we come across nearly every single week when we go through Psalms and Proverbs is about watching what you say. Being careful about what comes out of your mouth. Additionally, remembering not to be prideful and arrogant, thinking you know something, right? Now, I haven't pre-read Proverbs 26 yet, just because I haven't had time, but I wouldn't be surprised if when we read Proverbs 26 this morning that it actually has at least one verse about guarding your tongue. Now Psalm 39 certainly does, so let me read it. It's only 13 verses and then we'll kind of go back through and just kind of reiterate and, and really look at a couple of things. Let's begin. Psalm 39. Nine to the chief musician, a psalm of David. Verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a brittle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace, even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing, the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know my end, and the measure of my days, what is it, that I may know how frail I am? Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Surely every man walketh in vain shrew. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thy hand. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner as my fathers were. O spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence, and be no more. Alright, so that's Psalm 39. Let's just start with the first part here. David says, I said I will take heed of my ways... That 
I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a brittle while the wicked is before me. You know, the wicked will... We have, you have to really watch what you say. Because, especially when they know that you're a Christian, because they're just looking for you to mess up. Right? So that they can laugh, mock, discredit your beliefs. Oh, I thought you were a Christian. You said this. Your attitudes. Matthew Henry says this, If an evil thought should arise in the mind, suppress it. Watchfulness in the habit is the bridle, is the bridle upon the head. Watchfulness in acts is the hand upon the bridle. When not able to separate from wicked men, we should remember that they will watch our words and turn them, if they can, to our disadvantage. Sometimes it may be necessary to keep silence, even from good words. But in general, we are wrong when backward to engage in edifying discourse. Impatience is a sin that has its cause within ourselves. And that is musing and all of its effects upon ourselves that is no less than burning. In our greatest health and prosperity, every man is all... Well, let me skip that part because I want to talk about that here in a second. I want to focus on just this. When we are not able to separate from wicked men, we should remember that they will catch our words and turn them if they can to our disadvantage. It's so important to be a person who's quiet not a person who always has to be heard not a person whose opinions always have to be you know who I'm talking about maybe some of that's you oh, I just have to share my opinion on this I just have to gossip about this I just have to complain and murmur about this There's so much in there's so much in the Psalms and Proverbs about not doing that. Verse four Lord make me to know my end and the measure of my days, that is that I may know how frail I am. David's saying, Help me to understand just how short life really is, just how insignificant I really am in the grand scheme of things. You see, we all think that we're just the center of the universe. We think that our generation, even our generation is a grain of sand on the timeline of human history, and yet we act like our generation is the focal point of all things. Like there's never been more importance than our little 70-year existence. Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and my age is nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. What is vanity? What is vanity? Vanity is this. Sometimes it's translated as a vapor, as a breath. It means it's emptiness, unsatisfactory. It's the Hebrew word habel. So some translations will say man is just a vapor, he's just a breath. It's emptiness. Insignificant. That's what David is saying. David says, Surely every man at his best state, when you're at your very, very best, it's altogether emptiness. Every man walketh in a vain show, shoe. Some translations will say shadow. Surely they are disquieted in vain. And then he goes on, they they heap up riches. So they spend all this time, they gather all this wealth for what? They have no idea who's going to 
who it's going to whose hands it's going to end up in. You spend your whole life stockpiling wealth and then where does it end up? You don't even know. David says, "You know what my hope is in verse 7. I w- and now Lord I wait what wait I for my hope is in thee. Why deliver me from my transgressions? Make me not a reproach of the foolish." He's saying, I understand that my days are a blip. And I understand that man, even on his bet even on his best day, in his best moments, is still empty. And there's no hope in riches and stockpiling riches. There's only one thing to put hope in. And that is in the one who forgives transgressions. Right? The one who gives eternal life. The one who can give us the real inheritance, the real future which is not the here and right now. I put my hope in thee. Verse 12, hear my prayer, Lord. Give ear to my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with with thee. I am a sojourner as all my fathers were. Spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. People live as though this world is all there is. Furthermore, they live as though this world is all there is and that they're going to live forever in it. Not understanding how short their life is. Lord, help me to know my end and the measure of my days what it is that I may know how frail I am. Thou hast made my days as a hand breath and my age is nothing before you. That's our psalm for this morning. Let's move on to Proverbs 26. Again, I haven't pre-read it. Let's uh, see what it might have to say for us this morning. Proverbs 26. Let's begin. Verse 1. As snow in the summer, and as rain in the harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. As the bird by wandering, as the shadow by flying, so the curse costless shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle f- brittle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. You see, those two verses are kind of similar to mind your tongue around the wicked, right? It's it, They're going to use it against you. What's the proverb say? Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Verse 6. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. The legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. parable in the mouth of fools. Why? Because they're fools. They can't make sense of it. Verse 8, As he bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. It's very clear. Right out of the gate, right? That today's proverb is about avoiding foolish people. Don't don't engage in these things with them. Don't try to speak wisdom to them. It's point... What's he say? It's like a thorn in the hand of a drunkard. Here's a... Here's a... uh, Popular verse that you'll have heard before. As a dog returneth to his vomit... So a fool returneth to his folly. 
as a fool, or as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. It's like you going back to the thing that's causing you to stumble, the thing that's wrecked your life, the thing that's ruined your relationships, the things that's cost you so much, like going back to it for some... 30 seconds of pleasure or whatever it is that you're seeking is like a dog going back and eating its own vomit. You remember the story Jesus tells about how they clean out the house? It's speaking of a man who's possessed by demons. Let me just read it to you. It's three verses in the book of Matthew. It says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and he taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation." It's this idea that you get everything cleaned up. It's kind of like imagine uh, an al- you know an alcoholic. You you go through all you go through the, everything you go through to kind of break away from the addiction. You don't drink for five years, and then one day you just start drinking. What happens a lot of times, and this is true with drugs or other addictions, when you give back into it you end up worse than you were before, right? Like you're, you're even worse now than you were the first stage of your addiction. It's that mindset. It's that idea. It's that it, as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Verse 12. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope, hope for a fool than him. Let's read that again, because this is a severe problem within Christianity today, humanity today, but I deal in the Christian world, so I see it a lot with Christians. Wise in their own eyes. They know everything. People claim that they're Hebrew scholars when they can't read two verses out of a real Hebrew Bible and make heads or tails of it, yet they're somehow Hebrew scholars. They're brilliant. They're wiser than everybody else. This is one of Billions of examples I see. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is no hope of a fool than him. There is more hope of a fool than him. So the Proverbs has spent the first 12 verses talking about how don't even deal with fools. They're foolish. But you know what's, why, you know what's worse than a fool? is someone who's wise in their own eyes. Verse 13, a slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way, a lion in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth a slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hands in his bosom, it giveth him to bring it against his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render reason. He that passes by and meddleth with strife belongeth not to him. It's like one that taketh a dog by the ears. He that passes by and meddleth with strife. So you get your, you decide to get yourself in the mix of things. Maybe you're participating in some gossip and all that. You might as well grab a dog by the ears. You know what happens if you grab a dog by the ears. As a madman who casteth fire brands arrows in death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am I not in its in sport? Where no word is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no talebearer, the strife ceases. Listen carefully to that verse again. When you keep your mouth closed, Good things happen, right? When you open them, you participate in strife, you participate in gossip, you you cast fire upon yourself. You, it's like grabbing a dog by the ears. Listen again. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Right? If there's nothing to fuel the fire, 
it goes out. He's comparing that to this next section, this next part. So, where there is no ter- tell bearer, someone telling a story, someone engaging in nonsense, the strife ceases. You see, there can't be this big gossip and and all this mess getting stirred up when people keep their mouth closed. Kind of like fire can't exist without the fuel, the wood, or whatever it is. Verse 21, As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. It's very clear. It's continuing with this theme. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Verse 23, burning lips and a wicked heart are like a post are like a post shirt covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. That's Proverbs 26. I hope that you've been blessed and challenged this morning. I don't know about you, but my prayer this morning is going to be that God would guard the door to my mouth. Help me to be that silent person. You know, another thing is when you when you're not always talking, when you're someone who's generally quiet in the workplace, in the office. You rarely open your mouth. You rarely got to share your opinion. You know what happens? In the few short moments where you do open up to say something, everyone listens. Why? Oh, the, the person who rarely speaks is saying something. And then, in those very few times that you do speak, if you speak real wisdom... You might just make a difference in people's lives. But if you're someone who's always running their mouth, you know what happens? Nobody's listening. Oh, there's so-and-so. Gossiping again. Murmuring again. Complaining again. Agitating again. Stirring up strife again. Don't even listen. People aren't listening to you. They're just waiting for their opportunity to speak. If you want to really be heard... Be quiet. That's our words for this morning. I pray that you've been blessed in the powerful name of Jesus. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting the podcast. And thank you for your prayers. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.